Okay, so finally we're going to look at sectors. Okay, so this is like a pizza slice. All right, so again, we have formula in our log tables. So if you go to page nine, you can see here we're talking about an arc or a sector. Okay, the arc length just being uh, the length of the curved bit on the outside, the sector then being the area of the pizza slice, if you like. Uh, the formula, we'll be using the one where the angle, the theta in other words, is in degrees, okay? So it's these two formula down here that are relevant to us on page nine in the log tables, okay? Now, they look quite complicated, but you'll see quite quickly that um, they're quite easy to fill in, all right? Basically, all we need to do is get the angle, uh, whatever it is, we'll sub it in there uh, for the theta over 360 degrees. That gives us, of course, the fraction of the shape um, and or the fraction of the whole circle, should I say, because that's what you want. If you're getting a pizza slice, you're getting just a section or sector of the circle. You want to know what fraction of the whole circle to take. So that's why in each case you'll get the fraction of the whole circle. And in this case, pi r squared is the area of a whole circle. So getting the fraction of the whole circle will give you the area of just the section you want. And getting the fraction of the whole circumference will get you the length of the arc that what, of what you want, okay? So let's take a look at an example. All right, so here we have uh, a pizza slice and the first thing we're going to do is find the area of that sector okay so the shape the area of uh, the inside of that shape okay so take down the formula from the log tables exactly as you see it and that is it okay now it looks harder than it is okay remember the calculator is going to do a lot of the work for us we're looking for the area so obviously i can't fill in anything for a equals, uh, we will take, let's take pi as 3.14 in this example, okay? Again, look very closely in the question to see what they want you to take pi as. So I'm going to sub in 3.14 for pi. The radius is quite clearly 8, so sub in 8. Don't forget to square it. Remember, follow that formula exactly. Open the bracket again, and then this is the angle, and the angle quite clearly here is 60 degrees. So put 60 degrees in there over 360 and close the bracket. Okay, now get your calculator, and we're going to type this in on the calculator. So bracket 3.14, close the bracket, open the bracket again, 8, close the bracket squared, open the bracket again, and put your fraction 60 on the top, and 360 on the bottom because we want the fraction of the circle that we need and the answer is so let's get it in decimal form 33.49 since 3 comes after the 9 will not get bumped up so 33.49 is the area of that sector Okay, so now we're going to get the arc length, all right? So we're going to go to our log tables and we're going to take down the formula for the arc length, which is this one here, okay? So that is L equals 2 pi r and then theta over 360. All right, now if you're getting the arc length, all you're getting is the length of this curved arc here. That's all you're getting. So when we plug in our values in here, we have 2 and of course pi we're taking is 3.14. The radius is of course 8. The angle is of course 60 degrees. And if we type that in on the calculator, we get 2 bracket 3.14. 2 bracket 3.14, close the bracket, 8. And then of course put our fraction 60 over 360. And don't forget to come up and close the brackets. So we are getting uh, 8.37333. We'll take it to two decimal places. So we look at the 3 that comes after the 7. That doesn't make it bump up. So we are left with 3, 8, sorry, 0.37. Uh, So 
So we are left with 8.37, okay? And it's centimeters because it's just the arc length. Now, just be careful because if a question asks for the total perimeter, okay, then that would mean they want the outline of the whole shape, not just the arc length, but also, of course, this line and this line as well. So if you want the total outline of the shape or the total perimeter, you're going to want to add onto the arc length this length here, which of course is the radius, and then this length here, which is another radius. And so we're adding on 8, add 8. So when we do that, we get, of course, 24.37 centimetres. So if you're just looking for the arc length, so watch out in the question. If it's just the arc length, use your formula and you can stop. But if you want the total perimeter, make sure to add on any other lengths that are in your shape. And if it's a sector like this, you have the two radii to add on for the total perimeter. Okay, so in our final example, we are going to get the area of this sector here. Okay. And we'll get the perimeter of the whole shape. All right. So first, the area of the sector. So get down the formula for the area of a sector from your log tables, of course. And let's start filling it in. Obviously, we don't know what the area is, so we leave it as A. It doesn't specify in this question what to take pi as, so I'm going to use the pi button on my calculator for better accuracy. The radius length we can get from here is 6 centimetres, so put it in brackets always, everything you're subbing in. Don't forget the squared, as is in the formula. And open your brackets, and then we need the angle. Now, although I'm given 120, that is not the angle that is inside the sector, so you need to be very careful here, okay? The angle that I need to go into the formula is the angle here on this side that's in the actual sector. So we're not given that, but we are given enough information to figure that out because we do know a full circle, of course, is 360 degrees. So if this section here is 120 degrees, that means the angle on the other side is 240 degrees. And it's the 240 degrees that I need to use because that is the angle in my sector. Okay, so now we're going to put that in on the calculator and we're going to do shift, pi, uh, bracket, six brackets squared, open the brackets again, put the fraction on and we have 240 on top and 360 on the bottom, close the bracket, equals, and we get 24 pi. And if we want that in decimal places, uh, we we'll press the STD button. So we get 75.39. The 8 is going to bump up the 9. And it'll bump up the 9 to 10, which will have a knock-on effect, adding on 1 to the 3 as well. So we'll end up with, just to show you what happens there, 75.39. When you add 1 on to the 9 to bump it up, it becomes 10. That becomes 4. So we end up with 75.40 centimetres squared when we round that, okay? So that's the area to two decimal places. Or if they'd asked for it in terms of pi, then you would have just left it as 24 pi centimetres squared. So again, read the question carefully, and it depends what way they want the answer. Now to find the perimeter of the shape. Well, your formula that you have in your log tables here, remember, just gives you the length of the arc. In other words, that is just going to give me this outer arc here, okay? But what I'm going to have to add on to it is this length here, obviously the radius, six centimeters, and this length here, which of course is another six centimeters. So we'll do that at the end. So let's get the length of the arc first. So 2, we leave pi as pi. The radius, of course, is 6. Put it in brackets. And our angle, we figured out already, is 240 over 360. Let's close down that bracket. And then I'll do that on the calculator. So we have 2 
pi bracket 6 bracket 240 on top 360 on the bottom and we end up with 8 pi if we want it in terms of pi or we'll do decimal places as well 25.1 we'll do it to two decimal places three look at the two the two does not bump up the three so 25.13 centimeters that remember is just the length of the highlighted bit the arc so if i want the total perimeter okay remember you need to add on the other two lengths so it'll be 25.13 add six add six okay and that gives you 37.13 centimeters for the total perimeter